Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clive J. Kell, and it is April the 13th, 2020. This is episode 42, and I am here with my artist friends, Diane and Constance. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hello, everybody. All right. Another week has gone by. And we are still in lockup, quarantine, (laughs) self-storage, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) And as part of the conversation from last week, Constance brought up a very interesting point. I thought we might explore it with this episode. As artists, we normally are work in solitude in our studios. So being locked up, our self-quarantine is not a major thing. However, as Costas pointed out, when you are ordered to do that and when you aren't free to go out, it has a different psychological effect on you. And so that's what I thought our theme would be kind of like enduring, enduring as artists, endurance and enduring this uh, quarantine period. Diane, you want to start the conversation off? Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, a lot, I mean, in, in general, a lot hasn't changed for me as far as being home and working in my studio. Um, but it is diff- a different feeling, I guess, because we're not you know, supposed to be going out and going venturing to the store or, you know, do, running errands or whatever. So it is a little bit different, I guess. Um, I know some, a friend of mine, even just being able to go out and paint is, is an issue. He, he was out in the middle of nowhere painting by himself. There was no other people around and the police came and made him go pack up and go home. And they stayed there with him until he packed everything up and got back in his car and left. So it's like, you know, I don't know. It's just weird, but but, but stuff like that's happening. So. Yeah. I've been, I've been hearing stories that, uh, Folks have been getting uh, tickets for just walking out mm-hmm. in the park, you know, and some cities, some cities have really cracked down and, so, and others haven't. But the thing about it is it's in New York or in the really hard hit areas. I can kind of understand that. But the stories that I'm hearing is like out in no man's land, you know, out in wide open country where they're they're They don't have the uh, pandemic as, as uh, you know, as serious there 
I guess part of it is because so, there's so many unknowns. So it's like, you know, you know, they don't know, like, how it's really transmitted and how, you know, how contagious it is. I guess they know it's contagious, but a lot of it's kind of unknown, and they can't um, segregate people into saying, okay, if you live here, you, you can you have to follow these rules, but if you live here, you don't. So it's kind of, they have to kind of give it to everybody at the same time. Yeah, I would think in this city that you would be more locked down than you would be out in the rural areas. And I mean very rural, you know, living on a on a prairie out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. <laughs> but I've, you know, in Tulsa, I've seen on television where they are going to the parks and handing out tickets for people who are doing not doing social distancing while they're out. You know, so they're well, that definitely watching people. That I can understand. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, a bunch of kids are playing basketball or, or uh, people are sitting next, you know, together. And yes, that because uh, being out shouldn't be a problem as long as, you know, next person's, you know, 20 feet away from you, you know, whatever. I don't yeah, know. I guess maybe they, the one police that you're talking about, Diane, um, Maybe he was afraid somebody would stop and start talking to him, so I, they made him pack up and go home. I but, guess, but it's kind of rough being a plain air painter. And yeah, yeah it's kind of hard to have it. <laughs> it's been called here. I'm a fair weather plain air plain air painter. <laughs> I don't really like it now when it's cold and nasty outside. <laughs> but, um, you know, so um, yeah, it's uh, it's hard if that's what you like to do and you want to go out and you can't. <laughs> it's yeah. rough. I mean, that's how he makes his living. So it's it's kind of like, well, I mean, there's a lot of people that are out of work right now because of, you know, they're not an essential, um, considered essential. So they're, you know, yeah. they're having to stay home and make do with things. But it's, it, it's a difficult situation to be in, for sure. Yeah. yeah. This, at this point in time, it kind of makes me glad I'm the age that I am because... <laughs> I, I cannot, uh, I cannot real, realize myself how rough it must be to have like two or three children at home and trying to keep them entertained all day long in a, in a no neighborhood, you know, when they're used to going out and playing and they can't yeah. unless would, they go out in the backyard and play. I mean, still. Especially young children because they wouldn't really under, be able to understand why, you know. Why they, all of a sudden they can't do what they usually do. All right. I about that the other day, you know, because uh, Easter time, when I was growing up, you associate candy with Easter. Lots of candy. Uh, Easter egg hunting, you know. Easter but egg then, hunting, and there, you know. And you I, turn the children loose on the park and let them hunt for, you know, Easter eggs. And you can't do that because they're the biggest little germ carriers there are, you know. <laughs> And I was thinking, I'm just so glad I don't have little kids, you know, little children in the house, because I could just imagine uh, those kids after eating that candy. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> and you can't not give it to them because they, they grow up expecting it. We all of us, we all grew up, that, you know, that way, expecting yeah. it. That's when you get, get candy on Easter and Halloween and, you know, those Christmas. Those Christmas time, and so those little tykes are probably were just coming off, pinging off the walls. <laughs> they gonna have to space out when they can have you know so much per per day. And on on Facebook, ah, it has been cracking me up the pictures and everything. One guy posted posted a picture that I wish I had thought of this when my kids were little. It's perfect. He says, if you want to get a little peace time, a little bit of time for yourself. He says, especially if you have children that are like seven or eight years old, he says, you have them stand next to a wall and you put a $5 bill and they got to hold the $5 bill with their nose against the wall. <laughs> and if they drop it, they don't get the money, but if they can hold it there for however long, they, and then you decide how long, you know, <laughs> uh, they make them, you can go and sit down and rest for a little while while they're standing there next to that wall holding that five dollar bill <laughs> with their nose. <laughs> I know that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> I, you know, that's to me, I don't know about bribing children to behave. I think that they're supposed to behave without having to bribe them because then they get the idea it's okay to be bad unless they're bribed, bribed to be good. You know? That's just like, I don't agree with the, you know, with the government, you know, uh, giving out money and, uh, supporting businesses, but this is extraordinary times. And yeah. It, yeah. So I think a I, lot of people are still going to lose it all in spite of, you know, yeah. what they're doing. I would still relax the rules about the kids, you know, and Hey, bribe, if, especially if I, Oh, if I had kids in the house, I would bribe them with anything to get them to quiet down. <laughs> Cause Unfortunately, you can't go anywhere, you know? No, I mean, there's, you know, other than the backyard, yeah. you know, then they can't get too close to the fence if there's people on the other side. Yep. You know, because you can still spread germs through the fence. Of course, but. this is the positive side, but I don't want to bring us down, but there is also a very serious element, and that's been discussed on uh, various podcasts and shows that, you know, there's the uh, mental issues uh, there's the abuse, domestic abuse issues. And so I don't want to bring us down, but those, but, uh, this virus, uh, is it's affecting, affecting us, affecting and changing our lives in more ways than I think they're really comprehended. It's going to take a while to sort everything out, you know, after uh, the all clear goes to where we can get back to, a normal life at least to get outside of our homes walk around we are still going to have other issues that you know it'll be a new normal not the old normal yeah (laughs) because things have changed so much because people are going to be looking for new jobs and there's a lot of places are going to be closed because they you know couldn't weather the storm yep absolutely and you know as artists one thing that Diane just said earlier is, is, you know, plain air painters, you know, that's how they make their money and everything. One thing that I've noticed on the internet, the, the artistic or community has stepped up. Have you seen all of the various artist relief funds that are uh, being made available and grants and, and things? And, you know, we've talked about before uh, in previous podcasts about obtaining grants to help fund our art practice and sometimes it's really rather difficult. There's a lengthy process of application and you have to follow in one category or another. But these kinds of grants that are coming that are being made available now, they have eliminated a lot of that. In fact, I've applied for two of them. I don't know if I'll get it, but very short applications, you know, what kind of art do you do? How long you've been doing it? Where's your website? And what do you plan on using the money for? And, that's it. <laughs> yeah. No other, cool. no other, you know, oh, you got, you know, you got to include an artist statement in a biography, you know, a short biography, but, uh, you know, and they specifically state on the applications I've applied that, uh, you can use some money for, uh, whatever purpose to pay your rent, buy art supplies, buy food, handle medical bills. You know, it's specifically a, uh, these are grants to, uh, to help artists. So, uh, I encourage some of our listeners, I know we have quite a few artists and, uh, listeners search the internet and both, you know, take advantage of these, uh, grant opportunities. You know, all they can do is say no. And yep. all these, at least the ones that I've encountered here recently, there's no application fee. That's always been an issue with some of these grants, you know, applying for grants is there's an application fee and then you don't get selected. So the ones that I've seen so far, there's no application fee either. So it's just a, just ask. All you can do is ask. Yep. I think too, I think too, there's a lot of opportunity right now for artists to be online and um, sharing their art with people to help, uplift people and help them deal with um, all the mental issues that's going on right now. I mean, absolutely. Art, art does that for people on, you know, music, art, you know, paintings, all kinds of different kinds of art um, help uplift you and make things more um, just easier to 
to survive through. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, and, you know, I've always stated in that, like in our previous podcast, that this is the best time ever for artists. On the other side, this is also for artists to step up. Like you said, we can, we, we have this, this God given talent. And now we have the responsibility to share this with the world and we can uplift our fellow human beings. Most definitely. Uh, I've went through on, on my own Facebook page. I don't know if you two, you know, follow me. I've uh, went through and picked out what I call warm and fuzzy paintings. These are paintings and works of art that I've posted in the last two years before, but I I'm reposting them and I've been getting some really wonderful comments, you know, people thanking me, you know, that, uh, cause I don't have all artists that follow me. I've quite a few of my internet radio station, in fact, my internet radio station has become, it's, I have had a, a really beautiful email sent to me uh, last week that I am considered an essential. It's an essential <laughs> service. I never, ever thought when I started this thing, it would be considered an essential service. And uh, my programming, they have, the, the, it's helping a lot of people. So podcasting, uh, music, any creative process or, or creative, as they say, you know, um, step up, do it. <laughs> yeah. And it feeds our soul, but to, to know that we're helping somebody else, but it also uh, can, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it giving you the opportunity to, to get your work out there, you know, and everything. Speaking of that, what are some of the things that uh, you're doing? You had mentioned once before, Constance, last week about your uh, mask. Are you still doing that? You still making making your mask? Yes, yeah, I have them for sale on on uh, Etsy and eBay. So, yeah. Okay, Diane, are you doing anything coronavirus special or a little bit different than what you normally do? Or, um. Nothing in particular, but I'm working on some things that I had started before this all happened that I'm trying to get into um, production, I guess. But, um, yeah, I've just been really busy. Well, we have a farm, too, so we um, have uh, laying chickens. So <laughs> I've been selling eggs like crazy. Um, we can't even keep them in stock. So that's a whole <laughs> another side of things that yeah, busy, busy that... It's, I mean, a lot of people are depending on, you know, a supply in them with food right now. So it's, I guess that's coronavirus related, yeah. but um, not exactly my yeah. art. <laughs> but, um, yeah. We even had somebody want a dozen guinea eggs to eat. So, you know, but the incubator is full of chick, full of eggs now getting ready to hatch out. And we had one chick hatch out last night oh, and then Will came home with five five new i think they're going to be buffy girls he said he didn't know what they were but they're little yellow chicks so but they're all females they're they were sexed so oh, we've got enough roosters we don't need to get, <laughs> get pull it from the straight run <laughs> i'd rather just make sure that hands uh, you know you know i really i, I really kind of envy you you too you know uh you're out there in the open country you know out in a farm and everything. here i am in the city and i'm probably you know, I definitely risk my life going outside the door. <laughs> you two, you know, you can get out there, fresh air, you know, and everything, and uh, still, you know, live a fairly semi-normal life, you know. Just can't go anywhere. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're a plein air painter, and if they send you home, I mean, if you get take all the time to go somewhere and get set up, and then start painting and have somebody come along and tell you you've got to pack up and leave. You know, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I've been working, you know, more around home. I've been painting some home, but, um, and doing some other, um, projects, but, um, yeah, it's, it's not a good time to be going out right now <laughs> outside. People are. Yep. Yeah. I've been yeah. rethinking not doing plein air, you know, because in school when I was the teacher used to have us set up in a room and paint the doorway and then paint 
the whole premise of the painting was to paint what was on the other side of the door in the painting. So you painted the door, but door to, in the painting, but you were looking into another room and that's what you really were painting. That's the focal point, what was in the room, you know? So I thought about doing some paintings like that and then still lifes, but you know, just, or a, just a painting from inside the house, you know, looking out because I'll have to wash yeah. my windows. <laughs> 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 this is winter yeah. time. I have to wash yeah. the winter off my windows. Yeah. yeah, there's space out here where we are that I can go outside and, and on our own property and paint. But I've, you know, I'm I'm still limited to what I can do as far as that goes. But yeah, you know, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're we're not bad at all. No, we, we could be sick. <laughs> so yeah. Please don't say that. Count our blessings. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. don't even don't don't say that. That's right. Count our yeah, blessings. so far everybody in my family is, as far as I know, as well. Same way with me. I, you know, my two daughters who live over in Italy, boy, I tell you, I we've been doing far more frequent frequent uh, video calls. You know, checking up. You know, what I mean? and those girls are so. They, I'm just so proud of them, and they're my strength. They are. They are just so strong, and so uh, uh, with what's going on over there. And of course, you know, my oldest daughter had prematurely, you know, baby. My new grandson, he is coming along. For any of our listeners who are uh, familiar with that, and have uh, sent me, you know, ask for updates, uh, he is uh, still in the hospital, and he probably will be there for another month. But he is growing, and he is uh, taking his mother's milk now. He's breathing on his own, and just a bundle of joy. <laughs> yeah, those are big milestones, you know, for a preemie to. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I frequently get pictures, and you know, <laughs> my daughter doesn't like me to post them though on Facebook, so we won't talk about that. <laughs> I get gotta keep mama, happy. mama. <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta st keep mama happy <laughs> yeah well i th i think we're going to wrap this up uh hey we're, we are enduring and uh, as artists uh psychologically it uh, may get you know a little depressing just double down on your art uh maybe Take that online course that you've been putting off, you know, to help improve your craft. There are lots of artists that are doing that, or that are actually offering and they're sharing, you know, uh, videos with uh, and sharing their talents and everything. So uh, if you're one of those kind, you know, do that. And if you're just, you know, a listener who enjoys art, you're not an artist yourself, but you enjoy and support artists, please. Feel free when you see an image on social media that you like, make a comment, you know, let that artist know that you are enjoying their work. And uh, that goes a long way psychologically for, at least I can speak for myself. Yeah, nobody yeah. likes hearing crickets all the time. <laughs> yeah, and we're all basically self-employed people. So, um, you know, and anytime you get any encouragement from anybody, it's really nice to hear. And it's also nice if if people share our stuff to other people that might be you know interested mm -hmm. in what we do or you know just help yeah. each other out. And, I yeah. people who uh, at least on on my Facebook page who uh, <clears throat> they ask, can I share this? I say, yeah, sure. I mean, it surprises me that they that they ask. I mean, I'm just delighted <laughs> that they want to share it. Yeah. Well, there's so many copyright laws. They might be scared if they repost it that. They might get in trouble somehow. So, but yeah, some people like coming. it and some people don't. So yeah, maybe. right. It's good to ask. But. Yeah, but yeah, I might freely freely share because I put it, that's why I put it up there. You know, for for yeah, hopefully to inspire and uh, you know bring a little bit of like I always say, put a twinkle twinkle on their eye and a smile on their face. Then I've done my job. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to end this episode. This is was this was for April the thirteenth, two thousand twenty, April uh, episode forty two, and you've been listening to the Artist Friends podcast. I'm the host Clyde J. Kale, and I've been 
we've been talking with two of my best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. I'll say good night to Diane and Constance and let them say good night to you folks. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Good night, everybody. Have a good week. Bye bye folks. And thanks for, thank you for listening. And like Diane said, keep yourself safe. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.